the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. Good Wednesday morning, Jonesboro. This is meteorologist Tim Root with your KLEK 102.5 forecast. A blend of sun and clouds, a few showers and thunderstorms today, the high near 90. Mostly cloudy tonight in the low 70s, spotty showers and thunderstorms. A better chance of showers and thunderstorms Thursday, Thursday night into Friday, a 50-60% coverage. Mostly cloudy Thursday and Friday, highs in the mid to upper 80s. Your life, your music, we're KLEK 102.5 FM. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Catherine Drew. British Prime Minister Theresa May says the two suspects who have been named as being behind the chemical weapons poisoning of a former Russian spy and his daughter in Salisbury are members of Russia's military intelligence unit, the GRU. Typhoon Jebby has left a trail of destruction across a large part of western Japan and closed a major regional airport. And the White House is dismissing a new book on the Trump presidency by celebrated Washington Post reporter Bob Woodward has fabricated. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 12. Go and proclaim these words towards the north. To say, return, faithless Israel, declares the Lord. I will not look on you in anger, for I am merciful, declares the Lord. I will not be angry forever. God is saying to us, yes, you are messed up, but I need you to come back to me, because he loves us so. So for those of you who are backsliding, you're talking about the preacher, you're talking about the church, you need to return to God. It's not the preacher, it's not the people, it is you and God. So the church is a hospital for souls. Everybody that is sick, everybody needs a savior in that church. They might not act the way you expect them to act, but they need God just as much as you. You need to return to God. It's 8.02. KLK 12.5 FM. Good morning to you on your Wednesday. It's a little bit past the hour of 8 o'clock. We have Reverend Dr. Greg Ota in the studio with Good us. Good morning. It's time for our Wednesday morning Bible study. And this week we are going to discuss divine wisdom. As you all know, our divine wisdom conference is this Saturday. It will be at First Baptist Church. Teaching will begin at is it 9, 9 o'clock. 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. Registration, 8.30 mm-hmm. p.m. Registration information is on our website, newlifeempowermentministries.org. But we're going to give you a sneak preview of just some of the teaching in which you can expect at our divine wisdom. This is your Wednesday morning Bible study on Kate L.E.K. on 2.5 FM. Good morning. Let us pray this morning. Blessed Heavenly Father, it is one more time we have come before your throne of grace this morning to obtain mercy in time of need. We pray, Father, that you bless your word that came out of you for your people. The people are yours and we're yours. Now bless us, Lord, as only you can and take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we're talking about understanding divine wisdom. Like uh, uh, Brother Kale has said, he's being trained to be a deacon, and he's doing a good job with it. We're understanding divine wisdom. We have our annual divine wisdom conference this Saturday at First Baptist, 700 Kitchen Street. Today's topic is understanding divine wisdom. I'm just going to give you a little preview of how important wisdom is in our lives. Now, what is divine wisdom? I wrote down divine wisdom is the obedience of the Word of God per time. Now, I've heard a lot of people say, I I need this. I got to do this. But God said, don't do that. But but I need it. Uh, You are in disobedience. You're, You're disobeying God. That's not wise. Because the result that comes from disobeying God is usually disastrous. But while we are disobeying, it doesn't seem like anything is going on. But when the results come, it's not good. So I put down very briefly, how do I get this wisdom? This divine wisdom. All right, let me back up a minute. There's several types of wisdom out there. There's the natural wisdom. A child who's born uh, doesn't need to be taught how to suck breast. No, he doesn't. Uh, it's inbuilt in him. Now, the same child, when they get older, like to scratch your eyes out. 
That is also inborn. Until you teach them from that, they don't know. That's devilish wisdom. When you when you want to hurt your fellow human being, do things to them that you know will hurt them. You plot all kinds of evil and wait for them to fall into your trap. That's devilish wisdom. But then there's the divine wisdom that created the heavens and the earth. The one that hung the sun and left it there. The one that allows the moon to come up at night to give you a little bit of light. That wisdom that God used to create the heavens and the earth. That's divine wisdom. Now for everyone God made, he gave a gift. Without wisdom, you don't walk in your gift because you don't know what they are. So I said, Let's, how do I get this wisdom? Now, I'm not going to do justice to the topic. You have to come Saturday to hear for yourself the many teachers we have coming to speak. Number one, how do I get wisdom? Fear God. You going to help me read the scriptures, Brother Leganzi? I'd be happy to. And our first one comes from Proverbs 1.7, and uh -huh. it reads, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, mm -hmm. but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay, so the fear of the Lord is one thing you need to get wisdom. What is the fear of the Lord? It's the same spirit that was, Je that was on Jesus in Isaiah 11.2. Not going to go there right now. Psalm 111, verse 10 says, all right, I will still pull up the other verses. Psalm 110, 111, excuse me, verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Uh -huh. His praise endure forever. Amen. So the same thing or similar to what Proverbs 1, 7 said is what Proverbs, uh, Psalm 110, uh, 1, 1, uh, 111, 11, 10. verse 10. <laughs> Too many ones. <laughs> so that's one. Fear God. Number two, acquire knowledge. You know, when you know how to use a gun, you're not likely to hurt yourself. So you need knowledge. You need knowledge to be able to acquire wisdom. Proverbs 18, 15, while you're pulling up scripture, well, oh, you already now. got that. It's the heart of the prudent mm -hmm. get of knowledge. Uh -huh. and, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. Okay, so knowledge is, is, is the key. It's revolving around knowledge. The more I know, the wiser I become. The more I know about God and his, his doings and his workings, the more I'm wise. The more I have access to how he thinks and how he does things. Without knowledge, I'm in trouble. Number three, receive instructions and obey them. Proverbs 19.20. And it reads, Hear counsel and mm -hmm. receive instruction, mm -hmm. that thou mayest be wise in thy lighter end. Okay, so the wisdom is in the instruction. Whose instruction? God's instruction. But if you don't receive the instruction, you are not going to obey. It. You are not going to enjoy the benefit of divine wisdom. So the heart of... <laughs> hear counsel. He says that... You, you got to get knowledge. You have to understand and you have to obey uh, the instructions that is coming out of the person that created you. He's called God, the Lord God Almighty. He created you. He put a gift in you. If he said, I use this all the time, he says, make left, make left. After all, you didn't choose when you were born or when you were going to die. So he knows the plans he has for you. That's wisdom. What's the next one? Comes to you from Proverbs 14, 16. A wise man feareth and departed from evil. So we, we are supposed to be careful in our actions. That's but, what this talks about. But the fool rageth in his confidence. Mm -hmm. So the fool does what he wants to do. The wise will take counsel. A wise man feareth and departed from evil. Why is he fearing? Because he has the fear of the Lord in his heart. Let me explain this fear of the Lord. So, because a lot of people think it's just a word. Fear of the Lord is not like because God is going to kill me. You know, we have a healthy fear of fire, don't we? Mm -hmm. Have you ever stuck your hand in the fire because you're not afraid of it? 
Well, I wouldn't say because I was afraid of it, but I stuck my hand in there. <laughs> you stick your hand in it because you know it's going to burn you. That's the kind of fear we're supposed to have for God. The reverential fear we have for our parents. Not because they are going to kill us, but we don't want to disappoint them. That's the fear of the Lord. If you truly love God, you will have the fear of the Lord in your heart. Because nobody, nobody, nobody anywhere who love their parents likes to go against their parents. So it's the fear of the parent. It's not because your parents are going to pick a gun and shoot you if you made a mistake. No, but it's a reverential fear. So if you fear God that way, you're not likely to do the wrong things. So, but he give him up. Uh, now, now, I'm going ahead of myself. Going ahead of myself. So, a white man feared and departed from evil. I'm, I'm about to do something. Then I remember God is not going to like this. I said, no, let me, let me, let me, let me quit. But the fool raged and is confident. So, a fool does what he wants to do. No wisdom. Number five, be humble. Yeah. Prover- James four six. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but mm-hmm. giveth grace to the humble. Okay. This one is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. He said, He giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the hum- humble. Now, who's the proud? The proud is the unteachable. Doesn't need God's wisdom. He knows what he's doing or she's doing. I'm going to do it this way because that's the way I like it. It don't matter what God says, I'm going to do it this way. So that's the fool that is resisted by God. Whatever he or she does, they meet resistances. They're having problems because God is resisting them. But they don't see God resisting them. They just think they're having a hard time. But he gives more grace to the humble. Now, 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 grace is a merited favor. That means some things, as long as I'm humble and I'm teachable, and I say, God, I need your help. How long have we been doing this Bible study? Over three years. Over three years. You know I still pray before I come in here to do this thing? I'm not so proud I know so many scriptures. I could just come in here and wing it. And Do we ever do this without transcript, Brother nope. Leganzi? No. No matter how much we think we know, we got to put a transcript together, at least to guide us. That's humility, so God can guide us in his wisdom. But when you start making assumptions, I'm smart, I don't need to write anything down, I'll do all this, that. You're proud. God will resist you. So if you want divine wisdom, some of the, these are some of the ingredients. Proverbs 11, 2. And it reads, when pride cometh, then mm-hmm. cometh shame. Uh-huh. But with the lowly is wisdom. Okay, so... When pride cometh, then cometh shame. Someone told me this. He said, when you speak, so my father said, Dr. Brown, he said, when you speak, speak about the things you know about. Don't venture into areas you haven't read or studied because somebody in the audience might know more than you do and you make yourself look like a fool. That's a profound advice. You start talking about salvation, you don't know the scriptures about salvation or anything like that, and you're spotting off like like an expert, somebody might ask you a simple question because they know better than you, and you'll be embarrassed. So when you start being proud, you're about to come down. So where is this wisdom found? That brings us to our next scripture. Mm-hmm. Job twenty eight twelve says, But where shall wisdom be found? Mm-hmm. And where is the place of understanding? Mm-hmm. Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. So it's not in the world. The depth said, It is not in me. So even the deep sea said, I don't have any wisdom. It is not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with gold of offer, with the precious onyx and sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. And the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. So it's not on earth. It's not on something we can put our hands on. So if it's not on earth, where is it? Must be with God. Amen. Amen. So I can't buy it. 
God don't need money. There's no money in heaven. Yet the Bible tells us that the streets of heaven are paved in gold. So they are stepping on gold in heaven. That we are killing ourselves for gold down here. Listen to me. The wisdom of God only lies with God. It has nothing to do with your statue or your age or how good you are. You need access to God's wisdom. That's the only place it's found. First Kings 3, 9. And it reads, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. Mm -hmm. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Okay, so this is Solomon praying to God. My father, his father was already rich. David left so much money, so much materials for the temple to be built. He had a lot of money, he was a rich man. So Solomon had no choice to be rich. But he asked for wisdom so he can guide and guard God's people that he, he was inheriting from his father. Wisdom. Wisdom. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So if you start doing your own thing, you start making your own rules because you got some money. You are cruising for bruising. Is that how they say it? I never heard that one before. <laughs> You're cruising for bruising. But it, it makes sense. Yep. <laughs> cruising for bruising. You're doing things carelessly and you're headed for destruction. That's what it means. So how do I get this thing? It's not with man. We've just shared that. It's by prayer. James 1.5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Stop. So ask who? God. So that's the only place it is, it is right? Mm -hmm. All right. Carry on. They give it to all men liberally, mm -hmm. and upbraideth not, mm -hmm. and it shall be given him. Okay, so you have to ask for wisdom from God for you to get it. So how do we cultivate this life of flowing in divine wisdom? All these topics we are talking about is going to be taught on Saturday in depth. People are going to have 45 minutes to teach this thing, each subject. And you, you, you should be able, you will be able to ask questions that you have. So how do we cultivate this? Devotion to God. What's the scripture? And Colossians bring, three seventeen. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, mm -hmm. do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving mm -hmm. thanks to God and the Father by him. Okay, so whatever I do, it's not for man's service. It's not for I service. I do it like I'm doing it unto God. That's a lifestyle. So the lifestyle, that, that, well, I'm all over the place. Operating in divine wisdom through obedience. What does that mean? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Every time you put materials first, God is not in it. God is a spirit. So your lifestyle, if you want to operate in this thing, seek after God's ki kingdom. So how, what is this lifestyle of obedience? How? It says, daily and regular study of the word. Help me with this last one. It comes from James 1.22. Mm -hmm. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Say, say the last part again. Deceiving who? Your own selves. Say that again. Your own selves. Okay, so if I read the word of God that gives me instructions and I decide not to obey, it, I'm not hurting God. I'm just deceiving myself. The result I get is what I get from what I did. Amen? Amen. Please. This conference on Saturday is free. And someone is preparing lunch for everyone that is coming for free. He's not charging us. But you need to register so we know you're coming. Amen? It's Amen. on our website, newlifeempowerment.org. Yes. It's also a KLEK uh, website. Yes. Amen. And it's on Eventbrite. Search for it. Divine Wisdom Conference. Through Divine, obedience. Divine Wisdom Through Obedience. Amen. Would you lead them in a sinner's prayer for those that don't know God? Our sinner's prayer is as follows. Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. Mm. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. Make me a child of God. I believe you died for me, and on the third day you rose again, that I might be justified. Mm. I believe I'm born again. Mm. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If you have prayed that prayer, you're born again. Find a Bible-believing, teaching church, and join. Oh, by the way, we have Bible study tonight. Yes, our Bible study for New Life Empowerment Ministries prayer begins at 6.30 p.m. 
and Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. We are at Comfort Inn and Suites. It's off of the Excess Road, off Apache of Drive, and it's in the conference room. We'd yep. love to see that, you there. Yep, that's where we are for now. When we find our permanent location, we'll be there. Let me lead us in a prayer. Can I do that, Brother Elegant? Sure. All right, Father in heaven, we thank you for sharing your word with us this morning, making us understand where divine wisdom, wisdom comes from and how to access it. Father, we pray for the conference on Saturday. We, place, we pray for every teacher that's going to be there and every student that is going to come to hear your word. We pray that when we come, that we learn, that we'll be imparted on, that when we leave, we don't live the same way we came, but live empowered by what we have heard. We'll give you praise for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do we have any shout outs? We do. Mm -hmm. Brianna M Marie Cusick says, Good morning from Missouri. God bless you both. Well, thank you, Wow. Brie thank bless you, Brianna, you. and may God bless you as well. Shanquetta Cunningham says, I registered and a great message on today. Well, thank you, Shanquetta. May God bless you. We're looking forward as to well. having you, Miss Cunningham. And may God bless each and every one of you that are listening today. Today, As you know, this is all Gospel Wednesday, so we will have great gospel music all day long. Joining us at the top of the hour for Community Conversations, Jonesboro Police Chief Rick Elliott for his monthly segment. And then Brother Cops will join us at 11 o'clock for all Gospel Wednesday. So you God guys have you. a great and blessed day. This is Kate, L.E.K., 102.5 FM. This is Dr. Sharice Jones Branch, and this is your Black History Moment. Dr. Iona Rollin Whipper, a physician and social reformer, was born on September 8, 1888.